Good morning, everyone. Happy So What Day and happy Tuesday to you all. I am very excited to be with you today because today we are going to be talking about all the bags. Uh, a few weeks ago on one of our So What's, I kept talking about all of the bags that I always make because can we ever have too many bags? <laughs> um, anyways, one viewer suggested that we have a bag trunk show, a bag show and tell, if you will. So that is what today is all about. So I hope you are watching if you are the one that requested it. Um, and if not, hopefully you will see it at some point. So share it far and wide, everybody, because we're going to be going over some of my favorite bag patterns. I will show you um, some kits that we have at Sulky that you can make your own bags. Um, I'll give you all the links for the patterns that I'm going to be going over today. And then I have a variation on one of the bags that we recently posted on the Sulky blog. And I will go over those how-tos with you as well. So one lucky viewer who is watching today and commenting, posting your questions, giving me those thumbs up and heart emojis and all that good stuff, sharing out the post today, one lucky viewer who does that will be automatically entered to win a pack of digital patterns. So I'm going to put together... Um, a bunch of digital patterns that I'm talking about today, and I will send those off to you so that you can be in bag making heaven. <laughs> All right. So a number of you are coming on the feed. Hello. Thank you for saying hi. I appreciate knowing where you're all coming from. We've got Michigan, California, Florida, Maryland, Wisconsin, Washington, awesome. So isn't it great that we all get to be together here on Tuesdays for So What? If you have any sewing questions or any questions about what I'm talking about here today, be sure to put them in the comments below and I will be addressing them throughout the So What? today. All right, so I was debating which bag to even start with today because honestly, they are all my favorite. <laughs> I never really met a bag I didn't like, to be quite honest, and I guess I love sewing bags because they're kind of like instant gratification projects. Um, you can really finish a bag, um, or most bags, in an afternoon sewing session. Um, you know, of course, things come up and we can put, you know, our bag aside, or if we're adding really complicated embellishments, it may take longer. Um, but it's just something about a smaller project that I can then go and wear and I don't have to fit it to my body like a garment. I, I guess that's why I love sewing bags so much. Also, you can do so many different styles of bags. You can do a quilted bag, an embroidered bag, a bag that just showcases a favorite fabric. So they can really become anything you want them to be. And I'm going to show you so many versatile patterns that lend themselves to different kinds of embellishments and sewing techniques, which make them also great uh, sort of practice projects. If you want to try out a new embroidery technique or a new quilting technique, start off with a bag front and it might just turn into your favorite bag. Also, if you have a favorite fabric, but you only have a half yard of it, let's say, put it in a bag lining or showcase it on a flap of a bag. Um, and then, you know, you really get use out of that favorite fabric and you get to see it all the time. And you don't have to worry about how to incorporate that into a garment or a larger quilt when you have nothing that it matches. So, so many different reasons to love bags. But I am going to start off by talking about the Bonnie bag. I'm going to show you bags of all different shapes and sizes here today as well. This is a bag that was designed by Sally Tomato, and you will see a lot of bags designed by Sally Tomato. You can find this pattern at sulky.com. It's a digital pattern, so you will get all the digital files delivered to uh, your email. And this is a large scale tote bag, and it really stands up on its own with the help of some foam interlining, or excuse me, fleece interlining and additional interfacing. 
And if you're adding the beautiful machine embroidery like you see on this picture here, you also have some additional stabilizer. So this thing stands up on its own and those beautiful cork straps really also stand up on their own. Um, so it really has great structure to it. It's nice and roomy. It has lots of pockets. This outer zipper pocket is on both sides. So you see it on the front and the back. And I'm going to show you my examples where I did the embroidery as shown here on the pattern cover. But I also did another version with hand embroidery. And I put that motif on the front of the pockets. So lots of different you know, ways you can embellish this with different design combinations. These are beautiful large scale embroidery designs available for hand or machine embroidery. And you can actually grab a kit of this as well at sulky.com that comes with all the thread you need and stabilizer for either version. So if you are into handwork, you want to grab that kit. If you're into machine embroidery, you want to grab that kit. The machine embroidery thread is actually a 30 weight cotton. So it has sort of this vintagey quality to the, the final stitch out. And once I bring my bag up here, um, hopefully you'll be able to see that. But cork fabric is also on the base. And then you use your little leftover cork pieces to create these little really simple zipper pulls. Just adding a little more pop of color on that zipper is a little professional touch that a lot of the times we just don't think about, right? We insert the zipper, it's ready to go, but you add that little strip of cork and just tie it onto the end of the zipper pull and all of a sudden you have this designer purse. So I really like the details of this bag. It's very smartly constructed. Um, and it has uh, purse feet on it as well. So that cork that's on the base of the bag, you know, doesn't get really dirty and scuffed up because you've got those purse feet on the bottom as well. So I'm going to show you my versions of these bags. I actually did the machine embroidery on a green version of cork. We, we sold out of the green version of the kit. So you'll find that eggplant purple color um, is still available while supplies last. Um, but I added my embroidery to this version. Again, it's got that great little zipper pull. This pocket actually is very roomy. You wouldn't think that a little slip pocket right here would hold very much, but the way that it is added, it has these little cork tabs that you uh, add to either side. Can you see that? And they almost act like a gusset, kind of pushing the pocket out a little bit. So it gives you a little bit more room to groove in the pocket. So it's super functional. Really, really love that. And then we also have a video cast on our education platform all about teaching you how this all goes together and teaching you how to do either version of embroidery, whether you want to do machine or hand. And I also go over how to match up your embroidery perfectly along the seam line so that you have this beautiful matching mirrored embroidery and everything lines up perfectly. So if you would like instructions on that, grab our video cast, register for it. It's on demand, available to watch at any time. Here's what the base looks like with those purse feet. And it's got some really beautiful top stitching along it as well. You'll get these great corners and such a roomy, roomy tote bag that it looks super designer. So. On the inside, you'll see a very large zippered pocket as well as a little slip pocket that is perfectly sized for like a small tablet or an e-reader. So really great. It's got this great magnet closure. It's a big magnetic bar. And in the video cast, you'll also learn how to deal with magnetic bars like this. You actually sew through the plastic that encases the metal bars 
And it's a really, really unique piece of purse hardware. I've used it on a couple of different projects ever since learning how to do it uh, during this project. And it's a super heavy duty magnet. I mean, this thing is strong. <laughs> okay. So you're going to love this pattern. You can grab the digital pattern or the eggplant kit in hand or machine embroidery. So here's my hand embroidery version that I did with that purple cork. And you can see this is the same design. If you sign up for the video cast, you get, I believe, please someone correct me if I'm wrong. I can't believe I've even forgotten this because this video cast was very near and dear to my heart and I worked on it for a long, long time. Um, but you will get some embroidery designs included with purchase of your video cast. So at any rate, I did this one all by hand. You could see there's lots of French knots and back stitches and stem stitches um, all along that pocket front. You could also do this design um, by machine if you prefer as well. Again, it, as long as you indicate the correct type of kit, hand or machine, you'll get the right threads and stabilizers that you need to create your embellishments. So, I mean, I love this bag. Um, I made another version of it as well out of uh, some leftover red cork that I had. And it just happened to be long enough to create the straps um, and the base as well. So I, I lucked out on that one. Um, but really, really, really great bag and holds all of your stuff. Now you could create the whole thing out of a heavy duty canvas and forego the cork altogether if you wanted like a beach bag or a bag that's more um, suited for your travels. If it's going to, you know, if you don't really want the luxury look of cork, you could certainly do all of that out of a high quality, heavier weight canvas, or even like a sunbrella fabric, which is very, very washable and durable. So keep that in mind too. But you do want a heavier weight for the outer portion of the bag and as well as those straps. Um, if you are not using cork or faux leather, would also be really great for the straps and the base. Um, if you're not using that, then you might want the an additional interfacing or uh, the, the, um, the fleece interlining added to those portions as well. It is added to the base. So, you know, just keep those things in mind. If you do change up the fabric weight um, from something that is, let's say, just indicated on the pattern, then you may need to add weight to your fabric in the form of an interfacing or even a stabilizer like Sulky Totally Stable or Sulky Soft and Sheer Extra. Those are fusible stabilizers that will add um, sort of thread weight to your fabrics. All right. Sonia says, where is the cork? Only on the bottom or handles also. It's on the base and handles and that little zipper pull. So cork accents, really, really, really cool. Okay, let's see, what pattern do I want to go over next? Let's go over the Dini. So Dini is a little clutch pouch that we debuted this summer. Again, it is designed by Sally Tomato in partnership with Sulky. And this is kind of like a project pouch, um, but you could also use it as a clutch. And the smaller one you could use as a wallet. So inside are mesh pockets that have some fold over elastic on them so that they have a lot of room to hold your phone, your sewing supplies, things like that. The addition of this little tassel really, you know, takes it to that next level, level sort of designer-esque. Not to mention the whole thing is made out of faux leather and then you have a cotton lining inside and a foam interlining. So it's, again, it's got great structure. That zipper opens fully so that the entire thing will fold out flat. And, you know, it, it's really great to have next to your machine, have some thread spools, scissors. It will hold a rotary cutter. 
So the embellishment on this is uh, featuring sulky poly sparkle thread. So it has a little bit of metallic fleck through it, which really coordinates with the faux metal zipper. Um, the whole thing just comes together so nicely. So we have this available as a digital pattern. I link to it in the description of today's post. You will notice we have some items on our education platform. So if you're looking for a video cast, webcast, education that I'm talking about today to sort of, you know, give you all the how to's that you need for the things I'm talking about. Kits will be at sulky.com and some of the patterns uh, will be on either site. So sorry for the confusion in advance, but just follow the links that I put in the description of today's post and you should be good to go to locate all these patterns and all the great kits. So we've got Dini kits available. You will also need the pattern separately though. So if you purchase our summer sewing session, you will get tons of video instruction and lots and lots of help from the instructor herself, as well as the pattern included for free. If you grab up the kit alone, you will also need the pattern. So you can either buy the pattern separately or purchase the session which comes with the pattern. Hopefully you're catching my drift here. So that's another great pattern that we just debuted this summer. And um, if you're looking for something a little bit smaller, clutch size or a wallet to go in one of your awesome bags, this clutch size would definitely fit in that giant Bonnie bag. So <laughs> lots of uses for this one as well. And you can also use cork fabric for this too. Um, some folks in our Dini Pouch community um, used cork fabric and posted their pictures of their progress. Once you join a Sulky session, which all of our sessions are available at sewingonline.sulky.com, once you join a session, you are also able to join the community for that session. And it's kind of like a Facebook page, but it's only for people who have joined that session. So it's a safe place to go in, ask questions, post your project pictures, um, say hello, make friends. It's truly a community. So that is special for all of the registrants of the session. And it's been really cool to go in and see people's progress and help them out with fabric choice. And people will post pictures of, should I use this cork or this leather? And it's been really fun to have that interactive aspect of these sessions as well. So that's another bonus for joining those sessions, along with the more, you know, sort of virtual hands-on instruction. I don't know if I could say virtual and hands-on in the same sentence, but hopefully you get the idea. <laughs> All right, so that's Dini. Now, you will notice a trend here. I mentioned it at the beginning of the episode. Lots of Sally Tomato patterns. Uh, we just love working with Sally Tomato. We've been working with them for a couple years now. Um, we do exclusive patterns together. Uh, we do a lot of our events together as well. Um, they're just a really great company to work with and their instructions are top notch. Um, I really have not met a Sally Tomato bag that I don't absolutely love. And that wasn't very, you know, they're all very intuitive as you're making it. Uh, so I, I really enjoy the instructions. All right. So this is Zelda. Zelda is a really fun pattern that Jessica from Sally Tomato came up with this pattern because we did a New Year's Eve sew along together to ring in uh, 2021. And it was a four hour sew along event. We sewed up until midnight and then we had a countdown and a toast together and a number of you were there with us that night on New Year's Eve. You know, there were not a lot of New Year's Eve parties happening uh, this past year. So we thought it was a great idea to have a virtual sew-in and, you know, connect with each other. You know, we didn't have to watch any, you know, New Year's Eve shows on TV. We got to be with each other and ring in the new year. And we, we dressed up in our flapper girl attire because, uh, you know, it's kind of the 
resurgence of the Roaring Twenties. That's kind of where we were going here with that. So you will notice a little fringe on this bag, and that was really, you know, paying homage to the Roaring Twenties. And Zelda um, is associated with uh, uh, the Great Gatsby. And at any rate, really, really fun pattern. Um, a little crossbody bag. I'll show you my version here. You can get this pattern for free by registering for our New Year's Eve event. Now, I know it happened last year, but you could still register, watch everything on demand. You can fast forward, pause, rewind, anything you want um, to watch that four hour event. If you wanna sit and watch it for four hours and sew along with us um, in a you know pre-recorded format, by all means, check it out you will get the pattern included with the event. So that's where you will get the Zelda pattern. Um, and here's my version. This is a machine embroidery design. Uh, we digitize this here at Sulky based on a cotton and steel fabric print that is featured in the lining. So see, there's the cute little bird. And then the thread palette that comes with this um, all coordinates with that lining fabric. So really cute idea. There's this little bird, there's some flowers, um, there's a whole collection of designs. And if you go to that New Year's Eve event on our education platform, you'll see the whole design collection and all that good stuff. There's a pocket in here that you can keep your phone in wide enough for all of those large, large phones that people have now. Fully lined, nice zipper, great hardware, an adjustable strap, which is really nice. You can make this a shoulder strap or leave it as a cross body bag. Um, so really love this. Um, the fringe is super fun. You could make this out of cork as well because only the fringe and the strap are out of that accent fabric. So it makes it really affordable too to create this because the whole thing, you don't need faux leather or cork for the whole thing. You just need it for these accent pieces. So um, what can I say about this? Rotary cutter makes the fringe a lot easier <laughs> as well. So, all right, that's my Zelda bag. Oh, I wanted to mention too with Zelda, where did it go? Oh, I already brought it over. With Zelda, um, that also came as machine or hand embroidery. So this one, I have a little hand embroidered flower and that also comes from that lining print. Um, so we worked with cotton and steel fabrics to uh, bring you those designs. Really, really cute little florals again and that little birdie, so. So fun, this bag. I will say, you know, my girls are seven years old. I have twin seven-year-old girls. And as soon as I made these, they really just assumed that they were for them. Because when I make two of something that's kind of similar, maybe in a different colorway, <laughs> they know, you know, it's for them. But um, not this time. These have remained in my sewing room. <laughs> um so that I can switch them out and wear a different bag basically every single day. Okay, so that is Zelda, very fun. Join that sew along. Um, I know it's on demand now, so, um, you know, but you might be able to relive ringing in uh, 2021. <laughs> okay, let me make sure Alice says the sew along sounds like fun. Yeah, Jessica Barrera from Sally Tomato and I, we sort of tag teamed on that sew along. So I did all of the embroidery instruction and she did all of the construction. Um, so, which gave us a little bit of a break during that four hours, but um, yeah, it was, it was a good time. I think you all will love it. All right, let's see what's next. Ooh, okay, so this is another really great video cast that we have at sewingonline.sulky.com. It's called the Clara bag. And 
Clara is a convertible bag. So it can be a clutch, it can be a crossbody, it can be a shoulder bag, and it has really great purse hardware. So this is my mustard version of Clara featuring machine embroidery. And so this is what I mean by convertible. This is the back of the bag. So you create this sort of handle and you can make this out of faux leather, uh, the handle so it matches the bag. You can use your lining fabric and do an accent. So it comes with this little handle so you can carry your bag like this. You can carry your bag, you know, like this. Such a great option. Or you can clip your strap to it. And again, it's also adjustable. So you can have a crossbody bag or with this nifty little, forget what these are called, um, it'll come to me. This nifty little piece of hardware, you can adjust your strap, bring it up a little bit higher and have more of a shoulder bag. So this is a choose your own adventure bag, I'm gonna call it. And I love, love, love the design. I'm gonna show you how it opens up. So you have this awesome purse clasp. And Jessica goes over how to add this clasp to your bag because honestly, it's the scariest part of all of the construction. You've done all this beautiful embroidery. You're working with faux leather, which is not cheap. And then you've got to glue it into this frame. And I got to tell you, I had to take some deep breaths and meditate for a while before I just could bite the bullet and do it. But by following her instructions, I used some binder clips to make sure everything was nice and tight in this purse frame, took some deep breaths, and it actually worked. So <laughs> I gotta say, um, her tutorials are great. They really give you confidence. Um, I went and I've made this two more times. I'll show you another version as well. And each one was better than the next. So this is what it looks like when you raise up that portion of the bag. You've got your magnetic snap that holds this together, a really nice lining fabric that you can choose, a really roomy zipper right here, which is almost like a hidden pocket. And then the whole thing also opens up and you have all this room. You've got boxed corners, so that makes it so that you have a really roomy area in here to hold all of your goodies. And I'm, I just am so in love with how this all comes together. Now, it is normally not acceptable to do such a heavy fill stitch style of machine embroidery onto faux leather. So I really challenged myself to come up with what I'm considering a revolutionary technique to actually get a heavy stitch fill design onto faux leather. If you stitch this directly to the faux leather fabric, there just isn't enough room in that faux leather to accept all that thread. So your needle and your thread is going to push out that faux leather, no matter what kind of quality, what kind of backing, anything it has, there just simply isn't room for it. So you're going to get buckling. And when you remove your item from the hoop um, or from the stabilizer that's in the hoop, you will notice that your design is bulletproof and the faux leather beyond it has sort of stretched and come up. That's what's called buckling around the embroidery. So I came up with a really cool technique to almost make this a freestanding patch, but I do the final step of the embroidery directly onto the faux leather. The final step being these antenna and the little stitching around the body. That way it's permanently attached to the bag. And then all I have to do is sort of top stitch the rest of the patch to the faux leather. 
So if none of that makes sense to you, <laughs> or if you want to actually see it in action, you can register for our video cast and you will get all of the video instruction of this technique within that video cast. There's also another option, and we still have this kit available, by the way. Let me show it to you here. Um, here's the Clara kit in this mustard color. And you will see that the lining fabric is more of like a, like modeled marbled cotton fabric. Um, this is just a fabric that I had in my stash. So the kit actually includes that sort of marbled look fabric, um, as, as well as this really great mustardy faux leather. It looks a little bit brighter in that picture, but um, it's a little more muted, um, like a true mustard color. You'll get the Clara pattern, Sticky Plus for the embroidery, um, and all of those great uh, thread colors that coordinate with a few designs that you get for free with, with purchase of the video cast. You also get all that hardware, so notice that that uh, purse frame is also included in the kit. All right, where's my other Clara? Okay, so I really can't decide which one I like better. We also have this kit in a black version with gold hardware, and here is my version of that. So this is featuring another one of the designs that you get with purchase of the video cast, um, and it just fits the curve of uh, this bag so perfectly, this design. So I used the pretty gold thread for that embroidery. And since this is a more open work embroidery, it doesn't have a lot of fill stitches. I had no problems with the buckling or anything that you may experience if you are doing that butterfly. So this one I can embroider directly onto the faux leather um, using a few tips and techniques that you learn at the video cast as well. So also with this one, I chose to do leather for that hand strap along the back as opposed to the coordinating fabric. But again, it's got the same features. This is just a solid black fabric that I chose for um, this upper sort of flap lining, I guess I'll call it, even though it's on the outside. Um, but really, really nice, high quality. I mean, this looks very boutique style. Um, like you would pay a lot of money for this bag. And just a buttery, luscious faux leather that looks like the real thing, but sews a lot, lot easier. And it's a lot easier on your pocketbook as well. So that is Clara. Oh, this is so exciting. And it's making me want to just swap out the bag I was using this morning. <laughs> Okay, Mary is saying, which sulky webinar was the fringe bag? So that one you can find under special events on our education offerings page at sewingonline.sulky.com. It's called New Year's Eve Sew Along. So that's where you will find the Zelda bag. Okay. Blanca says, I'll want to try on vinyl or leather. That black one is adorable. Yes, I think you will love how it comes together. Um, you know, with Sally Tomato bags, there is rarely a seam that you have to hand sew. Um, it's just very smartly constructed in that a lot of the bags um, get turned right side out through an interior pocket. Um, and I just... I can't believe I've never thought of that before, but it's such a smart way to construct a bag where you don't have to hand sew along a, a lining seam or along the lower edge of a bag um, where, you know, sometimes it can just look a little bit off from the rest. So really, really like how those are constructed. Okay, where do we want to go next here? Let's see. I'm going to take a slight departure from Sally Tomato, but only for a moment. And... I will show you a sort of um, elevated zipper pouch. That's right. You can take a very simple to make lined zipper pouch pattern and turn it into more of an upscale clutch bag or even just a casual clutch bag. It all depends 
on your fabric choice. So I created a very easy zipper pouch tutorial where everything's lined, there are no exposed seams, you do not see the edge of your zipper tape, it's all enclosed. And once you get the method down, you can add some fusible fleece or batting into the mix, and you can create quilted zipper pouches, embroidered zipper pouches. You can use cork and make a zipper pouch that looks like an upscale bag. Now, like I was mentioning with the Bonnie bag, adding a little strip of cork to a zipper pull, adding a fun little tassel to a key ring that you have in your junk drawer, this is a way to not only use up your scraps from these great luxurious fabrics, but also just add a professional little touch that really takes this zipper bag to a different level. And it's such a simple thing, um, but we just don't always think about those little finishing details. So I linked to this tutorial in the description of today's post. You can head to the Sulky blog and find this zipper pouch tutorial because it's so easy and you don't need pattern pieces. You really just need to choose your own rectangle size. Do you want a super big rectangle? You could make this the same exact way, but size it for a laptop. And then you have a lined padded laptop zipper case. You could make out of cork, again, faux leather, or you can keep it simple with some cotton and line both pieces with a fusible fleece or a lightweight batting to kind of give it that cushiony um, you know, feel that you need for your electronics. So again, I picked a fun fabric from my stash and everything is fully lined. All the seams are hidden. So. This one's out of cork and it features a machine embroidery design from our pollen uh, collection. And this collection features sulky filane thread as well as sulky rayon. So the majority of this poppy is sewn in sulky rayon. And then that little white um, portion in the center is sewn out with sulky filane, which is a 100% acrylic thread that you can brush out with a wire brush and it blooms the thread and gives it this great texture. So you will see that texture in these other versions of the zipper pouches that I made. Here is one that features our dandelion from that same collection. Again, a little cork zipper pull that I had left over from some of my cork bags. Um, and you can see the texture you get from that thread. It's perfect for dandelions. So we have all of these designs and all of the thread that you need for these designs all packaged up in our pollen slimline container. So with purchase of that slimline of threads, you will also get all these embroidery designs. Here's a hibiscus. And you can see, look familiar, this is left over from my mustard Clara bag. I just made a little tassel and I always keep these key rings that fall off my keys or I find them randomly. So they're all in different sizes. They make great little tassel connectors and then you can add it to a zipper pull like you see here. They also sell these separately at craft stores um, and fabric stores. So I found this great yellow zipper in my stash but the zipper pull had broken off. See that? No zipper pull. So I added this little doohickey and now that zipper is functional and I could use it. So think outside of the box too when you're looking for uh, materials for your projects. Here is another one. This is a blue one. You can see all that yellow thread is that fuzzy, furry, sulky filane. It's really, really cool thread effect. So little pouches like this are great for embellishment. They're great for monograms, 
personalizing things. This one is awesome. The center of this flower is all nice and furry and textured and 3D. I don't know if you can see all that fur. So neat. And then here's the last one, the calla lily. The center of the calla lily, all of that yellow is in the filet and the rest is all nice and rayon. So here is this one, again, with a little metallic cork, little tassel added to it, and some great fabric from my stash. So these make great gifts. You can really pump out a bunch of these. You can use an entire embroidery collection like I did here, but everyone gets a different design from it. So they all coordinate. Let's say you have a bunch of best friends or you have, you know, a, um, you know, your, your Bunko friends. You can make everyone something similar, yet they're all different or personalized to their interests um, or their favorite color or something like that. All right, so that is the zipper pouch uh, tutorial. Also, while we're talking about metallic cork, I'll go over another large scale tote bag that I like. This one um, is really great for holding a laptop because it has a padded pocket in the center of it. So, and sorry, it's really flat. It's been in a box for a little bit, but this one features metallic flecked cork and metallic flecked linen fabric. This is Essex Linen by Robert Kaufman and great, great high quality linen. It has interfacing in it. The pocket has foam, fusible foam, which makes uh, adding that pocket really simple, as well as an interior zipper pocket as well. So lots of storage in this bag. And I really love that it has the addition of these rivets even though these cork straps are added in between the layers, you can still add a rivet to really reinforce and make it stronger, as well as adding another little decorative element. Rivets are super inexpensive. You can get a big pack of them for like two or three bucks, I wanna say, and it'll last you for a lot of bag making. You could add rivet uh, embellishments along the entire front top stitching line. And since we had metallic flex running through all of these fabrics, I used the Sulky Poly Sparkle, which is a polyester thread that has metallic flex running through it for all the top stitching on this bag as well. So even though there's a lot of metallic going on, it's still pretty subtle. You know, it's not in your face screaming with you know, silver and gold. So um, I don't know, I'm just really pleased with how this came out. This also has purse feet on it. Anytime I'm putting cork or leather or a really nice fabric um, on the bottom of a bag, I wanna add purse feet. And these are a larger purse foot um, so that it can stand up on its own um, away from, you know, opportunities for dirt, scuffing, that type of thing. So I put this full tutorial as well. Um, I linked to it in the description of today's post. Um, I also demonstrated uh, some portions or techniques for this bag on an episode of It's So Easy. So I don't know if y'all are familiar with the It's So Easy show on PBS, uh, but I did a demo on this bag. During that show, we showed how to do purse feet how to uh, do top stitching, how to work with metallic threads. Um, and then the pattern was kind of a secondary, uh, you know, grab this pattern kind of fun addition to the episode. So, all right, you can get all that information and that um, pattern in the blog post that I linked to as well. All right, so where do we want to go next? I have so many bags. Did I mention I have so many bags? All right, so let me show you, since we were talking about that filet acrylic thread, this is another bag that features that thread in machine embroidery. 
Now, when you're using that thread for machine embroidery, it's a 12 weight thread. So you cannot choose a standard design that's digitized for 40 weight thread. Most designs are digitized for 40 weight thread. If you use one of those designs and pop in a 12 weight thread, your thread is going to break. Your design's going to start stitching on top of itself because there is not room in the design, in the stitches that were digitized for that thicker thread. So if you've ever had problems with a design doing that, it's probably because your thread is too thick for that design. You need to choose a line art design um, that doesn't have a lot of overlapping stitches or any at all or choose a design that is specifically digitized for heavy, brushed, fur. Um, in the description of the design, it'll either have those labels or it will say this is digitized for 30 weight or heavy weight threads. If you're unsure, contact the digitizer um, or whoever is selling that design and say, hey, can I use a thick, 12 weight thread for this? Um, or will I need software to, you know, kind of change the density of the design? So very important to note that. This is a fun bag pattern, shoulder bag pattern. And this is all filleting thread. Now it's not brushed out. You don't have to brush this thread. It still gives it a really textured, fuzzy appearance. And it has this like vintage quality to it. Um, I don't really know how else to describe it, but it's really, really neat. And this has a piece of faux leather for the embroidery and the rest of it is a faux suede. There's also a strip of faux leather piping and it was pre-made but you could also just make it yourself. Here is that strip of faux leather piping. Just a little designer detail, again, that we don't always think about incorporating into our bag patterns. If your bag has a seam on it, like this one, you could add some cool piping that brings together the lining, or if you only have a little strip of leather or faux leather, add it as piping or welting to a bag or a pillow. And it's a great way to use up that leftover strip as well as add a little designer fun detail. So this also has a little belt loop opening. So I happened to find this great button in my stash that went with the kind of vintage vibe. Um, and then it's fully lined on the inside with a really pop, big pop of color. And you can grab this as well on the Sulky blog, the instructions for all this. So the strap is made out of a really wide woven ribbon. Um, if you can find like guitar strapping ribbon, that would be really cool. Um, or even just a grow green ribbon because the inside of the ribbon is lined in fabric. And that is what gives the purse the dimension or the shape that it has is just that strip of ribbon used all the way around creating that strap. So that's just another little cool purse design. All right, let's see. I think next I'm going to go back to Sally Tomato Land and show you the Holly bag. I absolutely love the shape of this bag and I've made it three times. Um, I gave one away as a gift and I just, it's a great bag that lends itself to machine or hand embroidery. That little part where it dips down, that is just the perfect spot for a monogram or a really pretty design. And I will show you that momentarily. Or you could do as shown here 
and feature a really pretty printed fabric and pair that with cork or faux leather. So here is the version of Holly and you can find this pattern at sulky.com. Here is Holly that I did with some of my leftover metallic cork. And then I brought in this beautiful large scale machine embroidery design and stitched it out with the poly sparkle. So that design is digitized for a 30 weight thread. And when it was originally debuted back when we used to have the Sulky Embroidery Club, uh, it was digitized for a 30 weight cotton blendables thread. So I thought, well, it's digitized for 30 weight. I can use it for 30 weight poly sparkle. Sure enough, it worked perfectly. So this looks a little bit bright here. It's not that orange. <laughs> it's a little bit more muted orange. But man, that poly sparkle really, really shines. And I added another cork little tassel. Even though that wasn't part of the pattern, again, me with my key rings, I just had to use the leftover cork and add another little element. You could put um, your little tassel on a swivel clip so that it's removable and actually put your keys on it as well. So double duty with the purse hardware. So that is the really pretty poly sparkle version that I did. And this is another one, my other version, um, that I did in faux leather. And it's well loved, I will say. I use it a lot. Um, it features this great cotton and steel fabric print and this navy faux leather from Sally Tomato. And it's a little bit slouchier because of that really buttery faux leather. Um, but I love it. Again, it has, like the other bags I showed, an adjustable strap. So you can do messenger style or shoulder bag, um, however you like to carry your bags. And I, I can't say enough about it. I chose a gunmetal hardware um, and it really goes with the color palette well. I added this little embroidered tag. It's kind of like a luggage tag and it has a snap on the back. And I have a full tutorial for how to make this on the Sulky blog. Um, it has a great little patch design that I got from Urban Threads and really coordinates with all of these great colors really well. So I love, love, love this bag. Again, with the purse feet. Um, these are rounder gunmetal purse feet. Um, inside, it's a magnetic snap closure. And there's a little piece of faux leather or cork, depending on what you use for your accent fabric, that reinforces the snap as well as just gives another decorative element to the inside. So that's kind of what gave me the idea for this circular luggage tag was it kind of goes with the circle that's on the inside. And then this also has a big pocket inside that you stitch down the center to make two pockets on either side. And then there's also a nice zippered pocket. This is where you turn the whole bag right side out through this zippered pocket. So the only seam that you have to sew together once it's turned right side out is along the bottom edge of this pocket. And I just top stitched mine because who is going to see that? Not to mention, it looks pretty good anyway, even though it's top stitched instead of hand sewn. So that gets pushed in. That's your very last thing to do. And everything else, all the other seams are completely enclosed. So love, love, love this bag. Again, you can get the digital pattern at, uh, or excuse me, the physical pattern at sulky.com. Okay, so I know I have a lot of bags to talk about, so um, definitely put your comments in. Oh, Cecilia cannot find poly sparkle thread. So at sulky.com, you will find it with the metallic threads. 
or you can just search Polly Sparkle and hopefully it comes up. If not, let us know. Okay. Just making sure we don't have um, questions that I'm not answering. Again, I have a great giveaway today. So if you are asking your questions, commenting, um, giving me those emojis, you are eligible to win a surprise pack of digital patterns. Some of the ones that I'll be talking, that I've been talking about today. So, all right. Esther says, I bought the holly bag and I'm planning to make as a gift this holiday. Excellent. All right. Oh, Cecilia says it's not in the search. We will troubleshoot that, Cecilia, because everyone needs to find Polly Sparkle. So I apologize you're having trouble with that. I'll let you know what I find out. I just, let's just see. Um, having trouble finding Polly Sparkle on website. Please help. I'll let you know what happens. Okay, next up, I'm going to talk about Scarlet. Scarlet is the first pattern collaboration we did with Sally Tomato. And we also have a free webcast for Scarlet. Um, it's called the Hobo Bag um, or Hobo Scarlet Bag Webcast. Search for hobo and you'll find it. I also link to it in the description of the post here today. Scarlet is a digital pattern that you can find um, through the link that I posted on today's uh, live feed up below all, all sorts of places. And Scarlet is all out of cork. Now, the inner lining is cotton fabric and we have kits available. Uh, in this cardinal red color, as well as a charcoal gray color. And it, the kit does not include the lining um, because quite frankly, I'm sure you can find enough in your stash and then you get to personalize it to your liking. So you can have a big pop of color on the inside. You can go with a more muted color. Um, so choose your own adventure with the lining, but the kit includes all the great cork you need to create this as well as that wonderful purse hardware. Here's what the kit looks like in that cardinal color. Oh, excuse me, that's not the kit. That is the finished bag. Well, at any rate, I'll show you what my versions look like. I added embroidery in that great poly sparkle. Um, oh, they're saying, not sure why it's not, not coming up. Hold on, we will get to the poly sparkle. Speaking of it though, added some embroidery. Now this design, I get questions about it all the time and I apologize that I did this, but I chose a built-in design on my Husqvarna Viking Designer Epic 2 and that is what I used along the flap of my bag. So this is a built-in design, but look at that poly sparkle. It's so neat. Notice that I chose a design without a lot of fill stitches again because that poly sparkle is a 30 weight and this design was digitized for 40 weight. So if I were to choose a design that was heavier, um, again, it would stitch over itself, it would break, it wouldn't work probably. Um, so keep that in mind. You also wanna go with a design that's going to fit along your flap, but you could also do embroidery along one of the lower edge corners and that would look really pretty as well. So this design, again, has this great tassel um, added embellishment, this ring for some really great hardware, and then the ring is mimicked up here. It has some great rivets, like I was talking about. Honestly, adding a little bit of purse hardware to an otherwise basic bag is really what is going to take it to next level. And it does not take really any extra effort. In fact, it's easier to add a rivet here than it is to sew through all of those layers of cork fabric. So I would suggest using a really sharp top stitch needle when you are sewing these layers of, of cork for these handles and such. Um, really, we use top stitch needles even for the embroidery 
on the cork and the faux leather. So keep that in mind. This one I picked um, a cute fabric that says love all over it uh, for my lining. But again, the lining is not included in the kit, so you can choose whatever lining you like. It has great dimension because of how the corners are sort of boxed together, yet still curved, which is a unique design feature. And then this one also has um, an interior pocket that's great for your phone or your credit cards, that type of thing. So this is the charcoal version. And then you can see uh, right next to me here, the picture in that cardinal red, which is really, really pretty. So nice shoulder bag style and fits a lot, a lot of stuff in here. This is the scarlet bag. So you can get the digital pattern, you can get the kit, and you can get the free webcast at sewingonline.sulky.com and you can see how it comes together. All right. So I decided to do a different take on Scarlett and make her entirely out of a designer canvas fabric. So this is Scarlett. And instead of using cork for the exterior, I only used cork for the handle and I used a heavier weight canvas print for the outside and a coordinating cotton lining for the inside. I have made this bag so many times. I, I love it either way. So you could see it has a little bit less structure than that cork for obvious reasons, but still has our magnetic snap, our great hardware, I was debating on whether to use the rose gold for this one. I thought maybe it would be too much pink with all these purples. But what you will also notice is I added some lines of quilting to this bag. So a print like this makes it really easy to do like this cross hatch quilting design. So what I did was, let me go through the whole tutorial with you. This is all on the blog as well. I chose, here are my fabric choices. You can see that really great canvas uh, print from Cotton and Steel Fabrics, as well as the cotton lining, and then that great pinkish, lavenderish cork that I found for the strap. I featured the brand new Sulky Plums and Purples thread palette, and that's what I used for my cross hatch quilting as well as to construct the entire bag. So plums and purples, if you are a purple person, grab up this six pack because it has all these great purples and lavenders and violets that you will probably use all the time in your purple projects. So this is at sulky.com as a thread assortment and it's packaged in this six pack to save you a little bit of money from grabbing up all the purples uh, separately. So this is the plums and purples palette. Okay, so first off, I made my little quilt sandwich. Now, I quilted through the canvas fabric and my uh, fleece interlining with no backing fabric. And that is so that I could construct the bag with my lining as a separate piece so that all of my seams were nice and enclosed. So by adding that layer of fleece or foam or, um, you know, what's the other one? Fleece foam or lightweight batting. You can use either one of those for your interlining. That gave me something to quilt through and I didn't really need a backing. If you want, you could add a piece of interfacing on the other side of your interlining or an additional layer of fabric. And it could really just be muslin as well because it's going to be inside of your bag and your lining's going to cover it. So if you're using a batting that has more of a texture to it, you might want another piece of fabric or muslin or interfacing on the other side of that when you're doing your quilting but I used a little piece of fleece um, interlining, so I did not feel the need to have something on the other side of that during quilting. I attached my canvas 
to that interlining using my trusty KK2000, our temporary spray adhesive. And then I marked my quilting lines. You might think that this isn't necessary when you have a print like this. You might think, oh, I can just sew down these lines, but looks can be deceiving. Sometimes the print is a little bit off, um, not actually symmetrical, even though it looks to be symmetrical. So use a removable marking pen of some kind to plot your quilting lines. If you're doing quilting like this, or if you're using a solid fabric and you want to maybe use that poly sparkle for your quilting, plot out the lines on your front and back pieces after you have attached your interlining and right before you're going to sew uh, your quilting lines. Another helpful tool, if you happen to have a laser light on your sewing machine, I always forget that it's there. Uh, honestly, I should just have it on all of the time. Um, on mine, I can adjust the brightness of it as well. So here it looks a little bit faint, but I have the ability to make it um, a lot brighter as well. That laser light, match it up with your drawn line. You're good to go. You barely even have to think about it. Just guide your fabric through as you're quilting. And that 50 weight cotton thread um, in that plums and purples thread palette is the perfect weight for quilting. It kind of blends together, but it gives almost this faint trapunto look to your finished bag without making it look, you know, super duper quilty. Um, it's rather subtle, but you know, you can't even see it right here. I have to get it really close for you to see those quilting lines. But it's just a nice little accent that again, elevates your bag a little bit. So kind of a neat addition. All right, so um, this is kind of a terrible picture I just realized, but here I've got my quilting going one way. And I couldn't decide, do I want it going the other way as well? And yes, in fact, I thought I would add some more stitching. You want to do the same thing with the flap piece so that it all coordinates because that flap's going to go over the right side of your bag. So you want that to be quilted as well. All right, so now I've got my front piece and my back piece quilted as well as my flap piece. And then I've got my lining pieces cut out as well for all of those pieces. Again, I did not have the lining on when I did the quilting. And this is me preparing the pocket that goes on the inside. I wanted to show you this because I don't know if you all have heard of a clover hot ruler. We carry them at sulky.com and they're so awesome for creating these sort of narrow hems, um, for when you turn something right side out and you've got to, you know, tuck in your little opening seam allowance, the Clover Hot Ruler, you can fold your fabric over and around it and iron the stew out of it and nothing happens to that ruler. It's super flexible. It kind of feels like compressed fabric the ruler material. I don't know what it's made of, but it's genius. Uh, so grab one of those at sulky.com when you're getting other kits and things like that, because you will use it for so many things. You can get really accurate edges and hems. Um, I just found it, you know, even though I honestly, I only used it once during the creation of this holly bag, or excuse me, the scarlet bag. Um, but it just makes it so much easier. You don't have to get your fingers in that little tiny fold allowance, you know, it looks to be about a quarter of an inch. Um, you can just fold it over the edge of that ruler, press it with some hot steam, and move on to the next portion of the pattern. Oh, and here we are just adding that um, flap to the back piece of the pattern. And notice that I have a zipper foot attached here. I'm not even sewing a zipper, but that zipper foot allows me to sew along my previously sewn seam and I can see everything I'm doing. If you have an open toe presser foot, that would also work. 
But a lot of people have machines that just have a standard presser foot and a zipper foot. If that is your plight, no worries because you can use your zipper foot for other things as well. So I put my zipper foot on and then I could see exactly where my needle was going down that previous seam of the flap and I could sew it on there perfectly. So I just wanted to add that as a little tip. And then here I am marking my fringe for that little tassel. And you can see how narrow I got with these lines. And it just makes a really, really neat looking tassel. You could make your tassel fringe a little bit wider, but I did just inside of a quarter inch down the entire length of my cork and then you wrap it around another piece of cork. There's a full tutorial for how to make this, uh, how to make these tassels um, during the hobo bag webcast. So you can see the whole video of how they are made. I've demoed them here on So What Before too, um, because obviously I make them a lot. Can you tell? <laughs> All right. And then there is the finished bag. Um, that I just showed as well. So I think you guys will really love how this bag comes together. Again, kits for this bag are still available in that cardinal color or uh, the charcoal that I showed you as well, if you wanna make it out of cork. So um, I've made that bag a number of times. It is an all time favorite. All right, so my last bag I'm going to show you is another large scale tote bag. Uh, this one features fabric that looks like denim, but it's actually cotton. You could make this out of a lightweight denim as well, um, but it just, it happens to be a cotton that looks like denim, so really neat. Again, featuring that dandelion filane thread uh, machine embroidery design that I showed you on the zipper pouch. This one, Katrina Walker created this uh, mostly using a serger. And we have a free webcast that shows you how Katrina uh, developed this pattern how to create it on the serger. You can also use a regular sewing machine if you don't have a serger. The webcast also includes some tips for working with your serger and also includes the embroidery instruction. Now, she added some more of those little pieces of dandelion fuzz along the upper edge of the design. So just note that if you do grab up that pollen slimline that comes with the thread that you need, as well as the digital designs, she added some using software. So your dandelion will look like this with just a little bit of fuzz. And then if you want to clone these in software and add more fuzz pieces, you certainly can do that to get the same look that Katrina got with this market tote bag. And here's what the inside of that bag looks like. So you have these two pockets that are kind of free floating. They're attached along that upper edge facing seam. Um, and you can kind of see that serger edge is exposed along that facing seam as well and you've got your pockets attached so they can move about, which is kind of neat, and zippered up so your contents doesn't fly about. And then I absolutely love this fabric by Art Gallery that is inside of the bag. Now, dare I say you could probably put that on the outside and swap the outside fabric for the inside fabric if you so choose, because I believe the same amount of each is included in the kit, but correct me if I'm wrong. So this is a kit that's available at sulky.com. Great, great fabrics from Art Gallery. And you can also register for that webcast and learn how it all comes together and get some tips for your serger. Here's what that kit looks like. You can see those denim looking cotton fabrics and that really 
really great art gallery fabric print. It comes with four spools of sulky poly deco thread because that is what is used in the serger to create this bag. Also, you will get a pack of needles that work really great for sergers. So you have basically everything that you need to create this tote. If you want to add the optional machine embroidery, again, that is available in our pollen slimline, uh, which is a thread container that holds all of the rayon and filane threads that you need for all six of those pollen designs that I showed you earlier on the zipper bags. So this is a great segue into our next sewing session. When we did, I just realized I don't have an image of it. So um, bear with me for just one moment and I will grab it. Um, when we did our serger webinar, um, I got a lot of feedback from people who they wanted more. Oh, I finally found the image and then it covers me up. They wanted more serger education. They said, we want to learn more and we want to learn more from Katrina. So I took all of the feedback from that free webcast. I took all the questions and compiled them into a document and identified what people wanted to learn and how we could expand out into a longer format course with Katrina on board and give you the information that you need to really expand your knowledge and use of your serger investment. So welcome to our serger sewing session. This is on our education platform at sewingonline.sulky.com. It's up for registrations now, but the content will not be activated until September 27th. I know that seems like it is really far away. Even just saying the word September is foreign to me. However, if you register early, you will get $5 off of the session. And uh, if you do not notice that the $5 has already been taken off when you go to register for the session, in that little coupon field, you can add the code SERGER5. SERGER5 in the coupon code field and you will get $5 off of the session for our Basics and Beyond Serger Sewing Session with Katrina Walker. So she's gonna go over in detail what to look for in a serger, how to set up your serger, um, how to thread your serger, and she's going to talk about different ways because some sergers are air threaders, some sergers are all manual threaders, um, and she really, really goes into depth with, you know, everyone's machine is going to be different. So you can get sort of the overview of those things and then apply them to your particular serger model. Because let's be frank, we cannot possibly have every single serger model represented in the session. So she does a really great job of saying it could have this, it could have this, it could have this. So take what you need for your model and then we'll be on to the next lesson. So you'll learn about threading. You'll learn about the anatomy of a serger. There is a serger buying guide. So if you don't even have a serger yet, but you've been thinking about it, I highly suggest registering for this session because you're going to learn all of the ins and outs of a serger. And then she's going to present a couple of serge as you go home decor projects and you'll see how easy and fun those come together. And you'll learn this method that you can apply to other projects as well. So even if you don't have a serger, you will enjoy this buying guide. You will enjoy understanding what a serger can do for you. It's not just for finishing seams. She's going to go over decorative applications, different hems you can do, um, different threads you can use. So there's a lot, a lot of information packed into this session. There are six lesson videos um, that go along with all the ancillary content uh, that you can grab up. And so a great deal right now for $14.99, this entire session. And it comes with the pattern uh, for those home decor projects as well. So you'll get a lot, a lot out of this session. 
And we have kits available for the Surge As You Go projects. Uh, there's one kit and you can use it for in a couple of different ways. So you can grab the kit and either make a really beautiful table runner or a pillow set or even a few placemats. Um, that same kit can be used for a number of different Surge As You Go projects. So really, really neat. Um, the kit has a little bit of a holiday vibe. Um, it features a jelly roll of high quality Robert Kaufman Kona cotton fabric. And that it's holiday in that it has reds and greens and creams. However, you can take all of the creams out and do your pillows in a cream kind of neutral colorway. You can take all the reds out and do the same or all the greens. You could pair the greens with the creams. It's a really um, versatile kit that you can use to create lots of different looks. So basics and beyond surge or sewing session, jelly roll home decor pattern, uh, jelly roll home decor kit. There's a lot going on with this serger session. I think you all will really enjoy it. So register for that. Get your $5 off by using coupon code SERGER5 when you head on over to that link. Um, the coupon might already be activated. Honestly, I can't remember which link I put in the description of today's post. So if you just see a box that says coupon code, that's where you put SERGER5 to get your $5 off of the session. That session is not a live event. It is available all on demand to watch as you wish. So the point of these sessions are that, yes, it's a longer format virtual experience, but everything is broken up into manageable lessons. So if you want to spread out your serger education and do one every Saturday and only spend a half hour, 45 minutes or so on it, by all means, take your time, work your way up to the Surge As You Go projects. Or you can watch everything all at one, once and have just a binge afternoon in your sewing room. So it's really up to you how you want to learn and how you want to ingest all of this great Serger content. It's also there forever in your library. Once all the content is activated on September 27th, your library will then house all the videos, the entire event, all the ancillary printables and materials, as well as uh, the pattern. So you can go and access it in the future at any time. If you watch everything and in three months or around the holidays, you gift yourself a serger, you can go back and refresh your memory on all of that great content. There are practice lessons and it's just, it's really, really thorough and great. If anyone's taken a class from Katrina in the past, uh, you know what you're in for and you can expect nothing but the best from Katrina Walker. All right, so I'm just going to quickly go through the comments and make sure that I have um, ad addressed most of them. Um, Nilsa says, Serger 5 is not valid. You need to use Serger and the number 5. Sorry, I was not, um, I was not thorough. Serger and the number 5. Um, yes, here we go. Serger five, like that, and that should work. Perfect. Ronnie says, time to dust off my serger. I know, that's what I find too, is um, I, I love using my serger for garments. I will try to make the entire thing on my serger. It's just so quick and easy. And it's really neat to see different ways of using your serger, decorative threads to use. And, you know, going through the entire lesson on threading really takes the fear out of threading your serger. And you will want to use different decorative threads, different thread weights in your loopers. You will get so much more use out of that serger investment by understanding all of those lessons that Katrina is going to teach. Um, so if you are someone who always keeps the same neutral thread in your serger and never swap it out, please come to our sewing session um, and you will, the world of sergers will open up. So, <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Oh, can't get the zipper pouch tutorial link to open. I will investigate that. Thank you for letting me know. Okay. All right. Serger 5 is working. Good to know. Good to know. Sounds like a sounds like fun and I love Katrina. She's just a great great teacher who's very thorough. I've worked with her almost my entire career and every time I do, it's just a joy. So All right. Love my sergers. Oh, sergers, more than one. Nice. But always can use additional information and ideas. That's great. Okay. I know. Now to wait 40 days. Is it really 40 days till September 27th? That can't be right. Well, I really wanted to give you all just a sneak peek because if you do want to grab that kit that goes along with it, they're only available until supplies last. Um, and by registering, you will get a great, great deal on that kit as well. Um, plus, if you purchase that kit now, I mean, dare I say it will arrive prior to the 27th of September and you'll have everything on hand that you need um, as soon as the content is active. So, all right, back to the bags. Judy says I've made several of these bags and they've all turned out great. So that's wonderful. Let me know too if you grab up some of these digital patterns at sulky.com and you create some of these bags, I would love to see your creations. Uh, we just really love to see what you create with Sulky and how you use Sulky Thread creatively. So if you are posting pictures of your creations on social media, always try to tag Sulky of America. Um, or you can add the hashtag so better with Sulky, and then we will be able to see what you're posting. You can also send us pictures at info at sulky.com so we can see what you're up to and we can then share it out on our page as long as you give us permission. And we absolutely love connecting with you in that way and seeing your beautiful creations. So um, I know we went pretty long today and I appreciate you all hanging around and watching So What Today because bags are my favorite. As you can see, bags are my favorite. I mean, I don't even know how many bags I showed you today, but... um. I have a hard time picking one every single day. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining me, everyone. I really appreciated that you spent your morning with me. And be sure to tune in next week for another episode of So What? I have some great uh, projects to share with you. And um, I hope you will continue to be inspired and go off and create something beautiful today. So have a wonderful rest of your day. And I will see you all next week for another So What?